Maigad and Ish and Chat to Claire Daly. Look, and I'd like to move um, amendment number 23. I suppose I would put it in the context that I really think we've looked at this entire issue the wrong way around, that rather than starting with data and evidence and research and then deciding what policy to adapt, we started with a model and, a, and an alleged solution. And now we're talking about doing a review after the event. And that's regrettable, and it contrasts sharply with the approach taken in the UK, where a significant body of research was undertaken in advance of any proposals being put forward uh, to alter legislation, which to me is a far better way. And actually, interestingly, the Home Affairs Select Committee interim report found disadvantages to a sex buyer law based on the fact that provisions already exist for criminal offences associated with the sex industry and uh, the findings that demand is not reduced, just displaced. They also very um, worryingly, I suppose, cited harassment and other negative effects on sex workers. And this has to be a key area against the point I made last night that already uh, sex workers are very vulnerable to exploitation by the Gardaí who are in a position of power. 70 reports to GSOC of, of threats and demands for sexual um, uh, uh, favours from uh, Gardaí. I think the health and policing and uh, implications are important as well. And the conclusion of the British report was that the sex buyer law is based on the premise that prostitution is morally wrong and therefore illegal, whereas the present law in Britain makes no such moral judgment. We acknowledge that the intention of many of the supporters of the sex buyer law is to protect sex workers, especially women, from the harm, violence and exploitation that can occur in the sex industry. But we also note that the sex buyer law makes no attempt to discriminate between prostitution which con occurs between two consenting adults and that which involves exploitation. Much of the rhetoric also denies sex workers the opportunity to speak for themselves and to make their own choices. And this is absolutely critical in terms of our amendment on this because we have devised this legislation excluding the voice of the sex workers themselves. And our amendment is calling for any review to put those people and the organisations which work on the front line in harm reduction to be the core component of any review in this area is absolutely critical. Now, I echo the points made by uh, Deputy O'Brien, and I would hope that given that your proviso is not later than three years, that you would commence this review uh, earlier than that. We had ourselves, like many of the others, had a two-year uh, provision in ours. A review of this type is not expensive. The representative organisations of sex workers and the harm uh, reduction agencies have their own records and data and publish yearly, yearly statistics, as do the Gardaí. So it is, in some instances, just centralising this data. But we need to engage with uh, the sex workers themselves. Now, I do think it has been a claim, and the only justification, really, our contention put forward by those supporting uh, the so-called uh, Swedish model is that if you criminalise the purchase of sex, you will uh, reduce demand and therefore have an impact on trafficking. An absolutely nonsense proposition as far as I'm concerned, but I would love to see the evidence in relation to that because there are laws already to deal with trafficking. The abhorrent force, bonded labour, abduction, kidnap, false imprisonment, rape and exploitation of women that goes on. Uh, human trafficking is absolutely abhorrent. I'm a bit intrigued in some ways about the, um, I suppose, over-concentration on sex trafficking and not so much of a, of a, a concentration on the coercion and exploitation of people for other forms of, uh, who, are, who are also trafficked, which is, I suppose, an, an interesting point. But I think given that we are talking about human health and personal vulnerability of a very marginalised group of people in our society, that we need to wait, move way quicker than uh, three years. I mean, our legislation should have been about, uh, you know, enabling those vulnerable people to take control over their own lives and protect their own health, but we've actually disempowered them.
by this legislation by giving the power of negotiation and place of work and so on much more into the hands of buyer by the, by the criminalisation. And I think our standing point really should have been the uh, health and human rights of the sex workers. And part of the problem with the legislation uh, be, uh, as it stands is that, you know, if all sex work is exploitation and there's no room for distinguishing between forced and voluntary sexual activity between consenting adults, then in essence you're saying that all women are victims, that the women involved, or indeed the gay men, don't know their own minds and they can't uh, make a rational decision. Now, we mightn't like that decision. Uh, we might, it mightn't be one we would pick for ourselves. It mightn't be one that those people would pick for themselves if they had an alternative either. But it is a valid uh, decision and choice for them to make. And by us saying that they don't have that right or don't know their own minds, uh, it's just completely wrong. And people made the point, Asher, there's only a few of them in that circumstance. Is it the case that minorities don't deserve protection? Just because somebody is in a minority, we should exclude their voice and silence them. It is absolutely, completely uh, wrong. So I think our amendment very much puts focus on the sex workers themselves. Uh, a, a, a very worrying trend that happened in other jurisdictions, and I could see here, is that monies were diverted into organisations that worked with people to exit them from the industry and we're all in favour of people exiting but when people have the choices and the alternatives but the problem was that a lot of the energy was taken away from the groups who do the harm reduction and it put people's lives at risk and that part needs to be analysed also.